tucked away on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., Number One Observatory Circle is a residence unlike any other, serving as the official home of the Vice President of the United States. With its picturesque Queen Anne architecture and sweeping wraparound porch, the house is both a symbol of the Vice President's role in American governance and a monument to over a century of evolving history. Far less publicized than the White House, this dignified residence has quietly witnessed decades of political and personal milestones, growing from its origins as a superintendent's home to the cherished dwelling it is today. Hi everyone, Ken here. Hit that subscribe button and let's explore this house. Originally, the house was constructed in 1893 as a residence for the superintendent of the Naval Observatory, which was then housed on the same grounds. Designed by Leon Dessay, the home reflected the popularity of Queen Anne-style architecture with its asymmetrical layout, turreted rooms, and comfortable verandas. Built of red brick, it was set among the lush surroundings of what had once been part of Northview, a large estate acquired by the Navy in 1880. The initial cost of $20,000, equivalent to nearly $700,000 today, was seen as an investment in the burgeoning Naval Observatory. The superintendent who first called it home found a peaceful retreat, just far enough from the city to offer seclusion and just close enough to the pulse of Washington to feel connected. By the early 1920s, however, the house found itself in new hands when the chief of naval operations, one of the most senior positions in the Navy, claimed it as his official residence. Renamed Admiral's House, it was from this point forward a prestigious home for the Navy's leaders. For the next five decades, prominent figures like Admirals Chester Nimitz and Elmo Zumwalt resided there, turning the home into a revered symbol of naval tradition. The residence served as both a private retreat and a place for official gatherings, solidifying its role in the ceremonial aspects of the Navy. For much of American history, vice presidents had no official residence, a situation that proved increasingly impractical as the demands and responsibilities of the office grew. Vice presidents often took up temporary residences in hotels or their private homes, each time requiring extensive security measures and upgrades. President Calvin Coolidge once remarked that the office should have a settled and permanent habitation to match its growing importance, yet no changes came about until the 1970s. With the rising cost of securing private residences and the need for a stable home, Congress designated Admiral's House as the official vice presidential residence in 1974. This decision was met with some resistance from Admiral Zumwalt, who disliked the plan so much that he ran against a Virginia senator in 1976 just to protest the move. Once Congress authorized the transition, work quickly began on adapting the house for its new role. Major renovations and security upgrades transformed the property. Although the designation of temporary was retained in the official documents, a formality that remains to this day. Number One Observatory Circle awaited its first full-time residence, but the timing was ironic. Vice President Gerald Ford became president before he had the chance to move in, and his successor, Nelson Rockefeller, chose to stay in his own stately residence nearby, using Admiral's House only for entertaining. It was Vice President Walter Mundell who finally made history as the home's first full-time resident in 1977. With each vice president's family, the house took on new personality, both in style and in function. The Mandels embraced the home's potential for comfort and modernity, bringing in rich colors, contemporary art, and Asian antiques, an aesthetic that complemented the home's storied past. George H.W. Bush, who succeeded Mandel, took a more classic approach with a light color palette and softer tones. He and Second Lady Barbara Bush enjoyed outdoor activities, adding a jogging track and horseshoe pit to the grounds. Later, Dan Quayle made the residence more family-friendly, installing a putting green and creating additional bedroom spaces on the third floor. These additions and renovations, some financed through private donations, reflected each family's individual lifestyle while also preserving the home's warm, lived-in atmosphere. Al Gore's tenure marked one of the most extensive transformations in the house's history. Gore delayed his move to allow for major renovations, including the removal of asbestos, updating plumbing and electrical wiring, and the installation of more efficient heating and ventilation systems. For the Gores, it was essential to modernize the residence while honoring its traditional charm. Tipper Gore even created a catalog of household items tracking furniture, artwork, and historical artifacts for future families' reference. Over the years, the residence evolved in subtle ways as each vice president's family left their own mark. During Dick Cheney's tenure, the house interiors were updated with neutral tones, and the family made additions that suited their needs. Joe Biden, meanwhile, celebrated family heritage by adding a tree swing on the grounds and creating the family heritage garden, commemorating former residents and their loved ones. 
Mike Pence's contributions included a beehive and a basketball court, while Kamala Harris and Doug Emhoff have continued the tradition of personalizing the space. These personal touches underscore the home's role not only as a place of national importance, but also as a cherished family dwelling. Number One Observatory Circle stands as both a private refuge and a stage for public life, hosting dignitaries, holiday gatherings, and diplomatic events. Unlike the White House, however, the residence is closed to the public, protected by the observatory's secure grounds and the discretion afforded by its secluded location. This privacy allows each vice president to transform the residence into a space that feels personal and welcoming, blending the pressures of public office with the comforts of a family home. What did you think about Number One Observatory Circle? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a fascinating episode of This House.